Good morning and welcome to worship. It's Palm Sunday. We have reached the end of our Lent series and now we journey through Holy Week and towards Easter Day. Palm Sunday is the day at Milton of Campsey where we also celebrate the move into our new building. That happened four years ago. And how sad that for the last year, we've not been able to use that fantastic resource, that gift from God. I'm delighted that next Sunday, we reopen the doors and we welcome people in to celebrate Easter Day together in that place. And I do hope that if you feel able to come, then you will try to book a space in order to be there. Palm Sunday, a day of celebrating and rejoicing, a day to pause and ponder, a day on which we remember Jesus entering Jerusalem and entering the last week of his life. We join together to give thanks to God for that incredible sacrifice that Jesus was prepared to make because he loves each one of us so much. And so let's join our hearts together in our opening hymn. And as Alison, Andrew, Ewan and Jocelyn lead us, add your voice to the praise as we sing together, lift high the name of Jesus, of Jesus the King. says we offer our praise like the crowd who shouted hosanna we offer our praise let us pray eternal god like the crowd who waved their palm branches we offer our worship like jesus who rode on a donkey we come humbly before you like the crowd who shouted hosanna we, we offer, offer our, our praise, praise. Young hands, old hands, fervent hands, and hesitant hands, all held aloft their palm branches. Lord, forgive us when we raise our hands, not in praise, but in despair. May we know your hands upholding us today. Like the crowd who shouted Hosanna, we, we offer, offer our, our praise. praise. Strong hands, weak hands, loyal hands, 
and betraying hands, all accepted the broken bread from the Master's hand. Lord, forgive us when we take but do not give. May we see your hands reaching out to us in acceptance. Like the crowd who shouted Hosanna, we, we offer, offer our, our praise. praise. Foreign hands, familiar hands, working hands and sad hands, all shared in crucifying the Son of God. Lord, forgive us when we have a hand in things that are evil. May we know your hands outstretched in love. Like the crowd who shouted Hosanna, we, we offer, offer our, our praise. Hear us now as we say together, Our, our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. Hands. We use them all the time. We take them for granted. We've been washing our hands a lot during this pandemic. And we've been praying a lot too. Here's a wee quiz. True or false? How many will you get right? This is a very famous painting. True or false? Answer, true. It's the creation of Adam by Michelangelo. And you can find it and see it for yourself if you go to the Vatican. It's on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. True or false? Were these praying hands done by Rembrandt? Answer, false. They were painted by Albrecht Dürer. In Argentina, there is a cave with hundreds of handprints that are thousands of years old. True or false? True. The cave of hands can be found in Santa Cruz in Argentina. Put up your hand if you have ever waved a branch in the air. Here is Dave the donkey. He doesn't have hands, but he does have a strong back. And one day he had a very special passenger. Here is Dave's story. Dave was so excited. He'd been watching all week for his grandpa to get back from Jerusalem. Dave had some big news he'd been waiting to share with him. Grandpa, Grandpa, guess what? I carried the king into Jerusalem. Oh, you're joking, Dave. No, Grandpa, I carried the king. I was standing out the front minding my own business when the king's servant untied me and led me to the king. The king jumped on my back and we charged down the hill and up the mountain to Jerusalem. The crowd waved palm branches and everyone cheered, hooray for the king, Hosanna, long live the king. We said goodbye and I headed home, leaving the king to get on with the job of being king. So, Grandpa, you've been in Jerusalem since then, haven't you? Tell me what happened next. Did the crowd keep cheering for the king? Well, Dave, said Grandpa, the crowd were yelling for the king. Wow, said Dave. 
I'm sure all the leaders came to meet him. Yes, sighed Grandpa. The king did meet all the leaders. And Grandpa, they would have placed a golden crown upon the king's head. Well, they certainly crowned the king, but it wasn't made of gold. The throne, Grandpa, they must have led the king into the palace, sat him on the throne and cheered, long live the king. No, Dave, sighed Grandpa, there was no throne. They led the king out of Jerusalem and they nailed him to a cross. Dave was stunned. A cross? So the king, the king is dead? No, Dave, the king was dead. The king was placed in a tomb, and the tomb was sealed with a heavy stone. But now the king is alive. He was dead, but the tomb is empty, and the king is alive. Dave stared across the valley to Jerusalem as the strange and wonderful news rolled through his mind. The king was dead but now is alive. Grandpa, asked Dave, did you ever carry someone special that you will never forget? Oh yes, Dave, said Grandpa. As a matter of fact, I did. It was a, a long time ago on a starry night. I carried someone special that I will never forget. Do you know who Grandpa was talking about? Long live the King! Long live the King! During this week at our Holy Week services, we'll be looking at the hands of Holy Week. And then, next Sunday, it's Easter Day, the day for Easterific. Long live the King. Jesus rode a donkey into town. All the folks came out from miles around. What a sight to see, a man to set us free, riding on a donkey into town. Jesus rode a donkey into town. As all the folks came out from miles around. What a sight to see, a man to set us free, riding on a donkey into town. Oh, Jesus rode a donkey into town. As all the folks came out from miles to see, a man to set us free, riding on the donkey into town. Oh, Jesus rode the donkey into town. Oh, all the folks came out from us around. What a sight to see, a man to set us free, riding on the donkey into town. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, 
Hosanna, Hosanna, Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. As they all approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage. It was on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent out two disciples. He said to them, Go to the village ahead of you. As soon as you get there, you will find a donkey tied up. Her coat will be with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, Say that the Lord needs them. The owner will send them right away. This took place so that what was spoken through the prophet would come true. It says, Say to the city of Zion, See, your king comes to you. He is gentle and riding on a donkey. He is riding on a donkey's colt. The disciples went and did what Jesus told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt. They placed their coats on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their coats on the road. Others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Some of the people went ahead of him and some followed. They all shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered, the whole city was stirred up. The people asked, Who is this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus. He is the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Amen. Thanks be to God. The whole crowd was in uproar as he entered. Who is this? they asked. And the crowd replied, It's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Can you imagine the crowds? It's hard for us to get our heads round the concept of crowds just now. When they gather these days, it makes the headlines. Crowds are a threat. Super spreader events, something to be feared. And I believe that is what upset the religious folks in Jerusalem on the day when Jesus rode into the city on a donkey. The crowd was seen as a threat, a super spreader event, something to be feared. What were they worried would spread? This conviction amongst those gathered that Jesus would bring change, that he'd overthrow an oppressive regime, that he'd establish God's kingdom. And that is, of course, exactly what Jesus would do, but not in the way that anyone had imagined. His death would utterly crush the dominion of death and sin. His resurrection would open the floodgates to new life in God's kingdom. The next seven days in Jesus' story would change the story for every life for eternity, bringing good news, certainty and hope to all who would receive it. Jesus entered the city and he was hailed as Lord. Remember, just say the Lord needs them. Hailed as the son of David, as the prophet from Galilee. Some amongst his followers had declared him the Christ and Messiah. Hopes were running high. After so long of living through silence, 400 years since God had last spoken through a prophet, the prophet Malachi. After living with the disease of an occupying force for decades, After bearing the burden of poverty and inequality, here was a redeemer, a rescuer. And so they gathered with their corporate hope and vision and their individual longings and desires. 
Hosanna, which means save us. We cannot gather to sing our praise or shout out for rescue these days. It seems like a distant memory. That day four years ago, when we marched along, the young and the old, from the old building to the new, crammed in, celebrated together, rejoiced, ate food. Do we raise a Hosanna today? Oh yes, perhaps even more loudly than ever before. We raise a Hosanna, save us, as we remember the 128,000 people who have died during the last 12 months from COVID. We raise a Hosanna, save us, as we remember those who have mourned without a proper funeral, who have been sick in hospital and unable to receive visitors. We raise a Hosanna, save us, as we think of those in care homes separated from loved ones, as we realise there are grandparents who haven't hugged their little ones for a year, as we think of those who simply crave human touch. We raise a hosanna, save us, as we think of those who have lost their jobs, their livelihoods, their futures, their dreams to a pandemic of young people who have not yet met in person with their fellow students, of the children who have sacrificed play and freedom for a year, a huge proportion of their lifetime. We raise a Hosanna, save us, as a church fellowship. We mourn all the activities that we had to lay down and the ones which we may never pick up. We think of everyday shared experiences which became disallowed. We raise a hosanna, save us, as we look at the world. A pandemic that comes in waves around the globe. Flooding in Australia, war in Tigray, the persecuted church, our own politicians scrapping to save reputations. We raise a hosanna for our families for our friends, for those we love and those we struggle to love. We need rescue, we need saving, we need grace. And as we consider the state of our own hearts this Palm Sunday, we whisper a Hosanna, save me. Where there is bitterness, pride, anger, hurt, shame, Regret, jealousy, indignation, greed, lies. We need a king, humble and riding on a donkey to make his way through the middle of the rubbish and bring repentance and forgiveness and peace. Who is this? Jesus is my Hosanna, my saviour, my rescuer. He rides into our lives to bring hope and joy and peace and new life. But do we welcome him? Do we tear down the stuff that gets in the way so that there's space for him to get through? Our own plans, ambitions, agendas, they need to become the coats on the ground. We journey into Holy Week with its slow, steady pace, its wonder, its unfolding tragedy. We must not rush this week. For it's only as we linger with Jesus on each day that we truly appreciate the enormity of Easter Day, when Christ rises triumphant as the one who has answered our Hosanna. Every evening in Holy Week, we shall be using as our theme song, Christ, our hope in life and death. By Friday, you will know it. Today, you may be hearing it for the first time. Maybe today... You're saying to Jesus, Hosanna, save me for the first time. May each of us know the hope that comes from putting our trust in Christ, who comes humble, but as the King of glory to rescue us.
to walk on. They waved palm branches, honouring your presence. Today we honour you, Lord, with our faithful tithes and offerings. We lay these gifts before you, humble tokens of our love, a public display of affection for our King of Kings. Amen. The response is, your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you came not as a king, mighty in battle, but as the Prince of Peace, the promised deliverer, sent to heal and restore our broken world. We pray for peace and unity between nations. Your kingdom come, your, your will, will be, be done. done. We pray for places where there is hatred, division, violence, slaughter. We pray for all those caught up in the awfulness of war, those maimed or injured, those who have lost loved ones, those for whom life will never be the same again. Break down the barriers which keep people apart the prejudice and intolerance, greed and envy, injustice and exploitation. Your kingdom come, your, your will, will be done. done. Lord, open our eyes and ears to see the world that you see, to hear the voices that you hear, to rage with them, to hope with them, to trust and work with them for a better tomorrow. Prince of Peace, 
come again into our world and bring the unity that you alone can bring. Your kingdom come, your your will will be done. God who walks across the water, reach out your hand to the people of New South Wales, where the rains continue, roads are flooded, dams broken, rivers swollen, families evacuated from their homes, where the Australian government names 16 national disaster sites and rescue workers are at risk. Your kingdom come, your Your will will be be done. done. For the sake of Jesus. Amen. And so, may the blessing of God, in whom our hope springs eternal, grant us peace. May the blessing of Jesus, who rides to wild acclaim and waving palm branches, grant us peace. And may the blessing of the Spirit, who holds us through our fears and our nightmares, Grant us peace. On this Palm Sunday, through the events of Holy Week to the cross of Good Friday, and beyond that, to the dawning of that Easter morning. Amen. Amen.